Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Welcome to our third Akadisa 5 2031 webinar live. Okay, from Malaysia to the world, exploring the uniqueness and fundamental of Islamic calligraphy in contemporary art. Hi, my name is Muhammad Iftita bin Jamil from the Faculty of Art and e Design, University of Technology Mara, Malaysia, your moderator for today. Thank you for joining us in this celebration of creativity at the 5th International Symposium of Art, Craft and Design in Southeast Asia, Arkadesa 2021. Today, we all have gathered here to unite South ideas and grow us bonds here at Arkadesa stage. For our third Arkadesa, we will bring you a very interesting uh, yet wonderful title, which is from Malaysia to the world, exploring the uniqueness and fundamental of Islamic calligraphy in contemporary art. I would like to welcome you to our third Akarisa, and this program will run around one and a half hour, starting from uh, right now till uh, 5 p.m. And I would like to remain, if you have any question, opinion, or anything to discuss about our topic for today, feel free to drop your things on checkbook in our Facebook and YouTube channel. We will select the question and ask the question to the speaker. Okay, before we go further with our topic, let me explain about Arkadisa 5. Uh, Arkadisa 5 is an international symposium for the outcome of a creative collaboration between the Faculty of Art and Design in University of Technology Mara from Malaysia, the Indonesian Art Institute, ISI, in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, and Silpakon University from Thailand. The goal, the goals in this stage are to activating the collaborative activities of several institutions as a catalyst for the success of the creative industry among Southeast Asian countries. It also provides a platform for the community of artists, designers, and researchers to discuss issues related to art, craft, and design in the era of creative industry 4.0. More than that, uh, this event provides a platform for a community of artists, designers, and researchers to showcase res research results, innovation, and creative works that have potential for the development of creative industry. Okay, before we get started, I would like to welcome Associate Professor Dr. Muntas Mohta, a respectful well-known lecturer in Faculty of Art and Design, University of Technology, Mara, Malaysia, to deliver welcoming and opening speech for today's webinar. Over to you, Dr. Muntaz Mohtar. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. and welcome to the third webinar series of Akadisa 5 2021. Before we start, I would like to give a warm welcome to students, lecturers from Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand for joining this auspicious celebration of creativity with us at the 5th International Symposium of Art, Craft, and Design in Southeast Asia called Arkadesa 5 2021. Today, we are all we have gathered here to unite thoughts, ideas, and grow our bonds at Arkadesa stage. Alhamdulillah, this group was tried by COVID-19 and not end our official stage. We stand together that by organizing the museum. With many interesting guests and topics, I hope this platform will help young generations, especially artists, students, to stay relevant and This international symposium is the outcome of a creative collaboration between the Faculty of Art and Design. I would also like to announce that our faculty uh, has renamed and rebranded to College of Creative Art from UITM, Malaysia, and Indonesia Art. Institute, EC, Yogyakarta, Indonesia, and also Silicon Valley University, Thailand. This international symposium brings these three countries together via academic linkages. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
For our third webinar today, we are very pleased to have Encik Gafo in Haji Tahir, which established a Bigafo Art Gallery based in Cyberjaya, Malaysia. With interesting and wonderful topic from Malaysia to the world, exploring a uniqueness and fundamental of the same calligraphy in contemporary art. That is a wonderful topic and a very current demand of today's um, discovery of, of art. Encik Gafo bin Haji Tahi is a contemporary artist in Malaysia who specializes in Islamic calligraphy. Hundreds of works and projects can be found all around Malaysia and the world. In several solo and group exhibitions, both locally and internationally, as well as extensive experience, knowledge, and talents, I hope that this webinar will encourage new artists to pursue Islamic calligraphy in contemporary art. Islamic calligraphy does not just symbolize Arabic calligraphy. The flute lines are the expression of faith and the manifestation of spirituality of Islamic identity, heritage, culture, and history. With the touch of contemporary art, the history of da'wah continues to blossom. I'd like to thank Encik Gafur Ben Haji Tahi for his contribution and time for today's ceremony. Congratulations to all Akadisa committees for an exciting event. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to get us all to the path of beneficial knowledge. Please welcome um, to Ikafur and thank you very much. Okay, thank you to Dr. Muntas Mota for a wonderful and inspired incoming speech. I'm sure everyone will agree from what Dr. said before. Okay, with any further ado, uh, we will start our webinar for today. But before we get started, I will briefly introduce our guest speaker for today, which is Encik Abdul Ghafo bin Haji Tahi. Encik Abdul Ghafo bin Haji Tahi is an artist and founder of Abdul Ghafo Art Gallery based in Cyberjaya, Malaysia. From an architect background, yes, architect background, and now become one of the pioneer of Islamic calligraphy contemporary art in Malaysia. With 1,000 and I think more, more than 1,000 original painting, and numerous solo and group exhibition all over the world, Encik Abdul Ghafo determined the, to push Islamic calligraphy, contemporary art from Malaysia to the whole world. So for this evening a, a webinar, uh, we will focus on the fundamentals of uh, Islamic art, Kofi celebrating the uniqueness and the core of Islamic calligraphy in contemporary art from the eye of Encik Abdul Ghafo itself. Encik Abdul Ghafo also will sharing his mission and vision while he is industry and sharing the experience and beautiful moment between Islamic calligraphy toward culture and impact toward people in a modern day. But before we invite our speaker, let's enjoy uh, some footage that content of Abdul Ghafo artwork and previous exhibition around the world. So let's watch. Without any ado, we'd like to invite J. Abdul Ghafur bin Haji Tahir to the stage to join our webinar. Assalamualaikum, J. Abdul Ghafur. How do you do? Waalaikumsalam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm fine. Fine, eh? All right. Uh, first of all, thank you to give your time and join our webinar to sharing your knowledge and experience in Islamic calligraphy. I think uh, this is my special moment uh because i can talk and heard personally from a person and well known in islamic calligraphy as in malaysia 
even we just doing in online. All right. Uh, so uh, first of all, I was sharing my deeper story to you because you you are one of the team in Banje before, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. So how about how about everything? Is everything is uh, okay? Fine. It's still uh, positioning some of the goods because uh, uh, it's a total loss. Uh, but alhamdulillah, Allah give us more than that after this, inshallah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, okay, Encik Abdul Ghafur. I think uh, myself and some audience in this webinar know Encik Abdul Ghafur a bit, uh, and maybe maybe some of our audience not really familiar with you. And maybe they just new in this uh, Islamic calligraphy and uh, need to know more about details about you. So can you, uh, Cik Abdul Ghafur, tell us and briefly introduce yourself to our audience? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Allah SWT and uh, Akadisa 5 to invite me uh, personally. Uh, as one of the guests uh, this afternoon. Uh, my full name, Abdul Ghafur bin Haji Tahir. Uh, my hometown is here in Banting, Selangor. I'm 60 years old. I have nine children and yesterday I got my 15 uh, grandchildren. Uh, we have a very big family. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, I study architecture in uh, UTM, UC Technology Malaysia, and my wife is my classmate. So I have nine children, uh, most of them, they do art. But uh, seriously, three of my sons are with me uh, today to contribute with me. Uh, personally, uh, uh, I'm an architect. Uh, until right now, I'm still doing my architecture. Mostly, I am doing my interior Islamic design uh, for the mosque and for the musola or Islamic bank like that. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, I'm 60 now. I think I'm already doing all of this works uh, more than 30 years. When I start working in uh, with the government, I'm working uh, in the uh, JKR, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Ministry of General Work, for 12 years. Uh, mm -hmm. After I resigned from the from the government, I started seriously to do uh, calligraphy, doing exhibition here and there. Alhamdulillah, until now, uh, I never stopped to do painting. This morning also, I, I, I'm painting. And that's why I got a lot of paintings in my gallery. I have few galleries uh, here and outside also, inshallah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, Aji. Uh, okay, Encik Abdul Ghafur. So, uh, when we look at back at your background study, background study, so you said that uh, the first, first, uh, your, 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 your career is a, is a, uh, what architect in yeah, the architect yeah. industry? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so why why you you get start from from that uh, architect architect environment to uh, calligraphy to art? I'm, I'm very thankful to Allah uh, especially and uh, to the things that I choose in my life uh, during my childhood. Uh, actually, you know, I don't know what I'm going to be. You know. Because uh, I'm living in the village with my parents, we are doing uh, all, uh, uh, all, uh, all, all business, all jobs. Uh, especially we are uh, specialists in uh, agriculture, you know. Uh, so uh, after I got my result, my brother uh, pushed me to be an architect. On that time, so don't, I don't know what is an architect. So because uh, we are orang kampung. <laughs> So he pushed me, he said, you can draw better you be, be, you be an architect. After I studied for several years in UTM, I worked with the Ministry of General Work. Uh, you know, architecture, uh, the advantage we study architecture, we study everything. We study about shape, about form, about art, about everything about life of a buildings, uh, landscape, everything we study. So drawing. The damage, uh, yeah, drawing everything, you know, uh, my time, in 1979, if you are not a visualizer, you cannot be an architect. Because the first day we enter the class, uh, the lecturer uh, told us you must draw 1,000 visualized uh, figure within wow. one hour. I don't know how the architecture uh, study today. Uh, <laughs> because most of the architect, they must know how to draw. If you don't know how to draw, uh, the second semester you will not be there. 
So oh. we study everything in architecture, but um, my my solution about architecture, we study how to solve the problem actually. This is the thing that I study in architecture to solve any problem about the life, everything. No, it's not just a design. Uh, and this one uh, make me uh, close close to the our creator. You know uh, how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala create us uh, to become uh, somebody who who have a skill, not just to draw, to think. That's why uh, uh, if we go to if I went to Dubai, you know, most of, most of the artists there, most of them are architect. I don't know why. Maybe architect they look to the to the art in different dimension, you know, uh, because most of the uh, galleries I made in Dubai, uh, because uh, an architect, for, for example, for me, uh, I can I can know this this artist have a uh, architect background because they have some uh, principle and something that they, they, they draw that his background is an architect. So when I work with the general uh, in the JKR, you know, uh, my boss, my director give me uh, a job to design mosque only, mosque, musala and Islamic school. Uh, that's why I'm very uh, close with the Islamic uh, environment. So, so that's that's a starting point for you to 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 enter this this uh, environment of art uh, and calligraphy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you you you, you explain uh, details about uh, your your background, your your actually your your how to start. How how do you how do you start this? Uh, your your it's like your hobby and your passion, right? So let's talk about Abdul Ghafur Art Gallery. Okay, what is Abdul Ghafur Art Gallery. Actually, um, I got this name just previously few years ago because uh, before this, my gallery is not named as my name. Uh, I have uh, uh, before this, I have advertising company, is instant sign. I have Nova Signs in Bahad. I have a Kelopak Nipa who brings uh, uh, flowers from Yogyakarta. Uh, after I met a uh, Chinese, you know, one of my business friend is a Chinese. You go here and there, why well, you don't bring your name? So he's the first one who uh, who uh, introduced me to, to use my name. So after I use my, my name, my personal name, uh, so uh, about the art calligraphy, you know, the Islamic calligraphy, you know, when I first in love in with this calligraphy, when I, uh, the first time I have my, um, we call it resident artist, uh, I think some of you know one of the singer, uh, Imad Al Hayat. He's from uh, Lebanon. Imad, mm, yeah. Yeah, Imad. He's a singer. I produce his album. This is a uh, side, side of my hobby. Uh, I like music also, but I focus on Nasheed. Um, during his time, I, I promote him as a singer. And then mm -hmm. he has another, another uh, gifted, he can do calligraphy. From that time, I become very serious. Uh, I learned from him. I'm with him uh, more than 10 years, uh, promoting his uh, album, his Nasheed, and promoting his calligraphy. Uh, we went to uh, Egypt, we went to China, we went to Lebanon, we went everywhere, just to promote his uh, painting oh. and his uh, uh, album. Uh, so he's the first one who, who gave me the inspiration uh, about the beauty of the Islamic calligraphy. All right. So uh, I think at my age, I, I know well uh, in my because uh, still till now, if uh, we can hear uh, this uh, song when Ramadan, right? Yeah. When bulan puasa, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, when we're talking about uh, you go to to internet or to international overseas for your uh, exhibition. So how many actually exhibition you are join? Uh, in local and international? Uh, I think I cannot count, you know, because uh, I don't know. I'm doing this more than 30 years and uh, more than 30 years uh, locally. Uh, and right now, so I have exhibition in Ipoh, I have exhibition in Nilaitika, I have exhibition in uh, Malacca. Uh, I, I do exhibition here and there, I don't care. Uh, but about the international, obviously, uh, before the uh, COVID 19 MCO, I was in in Dhaka for the for the uh, international uh, my solo exhibition in Museum of uh, Bangladesh in Dhaka. 
2019 before the COVID-19. And before this, I want to, I was, I was in, you know, there is a big event in Dubai. They, they call it Global Village. This event was uh, already 20, 20 more years there. And now they call it Dubai 2020. Oh. So every year we are there in Dubai for five years, me and my son. Um, for a few years, we, are, we was there. Before this, uh, I went to Australia. I mean, I don't care because uh, what I bring, you know, uh, actually I don't express myself that I'm an artist. Because uh, I just like art. I do calligraphy. Uh, and this are, 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 are cheating, are speaking about uh, the Al-Quran, uh, speaking about Allah. So it's, it's a type of conveying Islam. Eh? It's a da'wah. So sometimes uh, when, when people address me as an artist, I said, uh, I don't feel comfortable with that word. Because for me, when I can communicate with people with my paintings, this is... Uh, this is the best thing that I, I like, you know, because mm -hmm. through painting, we can see everybody. Uh, locally, for example, I can meet uh, the prime minister, I can meet the, the king everywhere because through paintings, you have no limits, you know, you have no limits. We, uh, we, we can share our idea, right? Yeah, our idea. When do, we do exhibition, sometimes I don't care who come appreciate the exhibition, I don't care so. Because for me, I just want to draw and to, uh, to share my painting to others. Okay. So, uh, so uh, from what you said before, we know that you go to everywhere, not just in local and in, and but just but to international level. But may I know how many artwork actually you have done and you have uh, uh, maybe sold uh, since you 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 are in this this uh, industry. Uh, for for right now, for example, I have more than one thousand original painting. You can see around here, because every day I'm painting, every day I'm painting here and there. Um, I think um, maybe five years ago, I started to print my print my my artwork because uh, some of the artwork uh, I don't want to sell them, not just because of the price, just maybe i i love some of this painting not to sell but the customer uh, they request for this painting so i started to print you know uh, what happened to me when i started to print my paintings uh, i have so many uh audition from from my my friend the artist why you why you print your painting your your what what you call it your original painting. You you shouldn't print your your painting because you you don't don't grade your 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 what your, your abilities. Art. Yeah. No, yeah. So artist. I said I, I told them uh, I'm not an artist. I'm not a painter. I just want to uh, to to share with the people. Maybe people can't afford to buy one painting twenty thousand, thirty thousand, five thousand. So when I print, I can sell for a few hundreds only. That's why I like. This way, because we can share with so many people, and some of the painting also I just give because people coming to our our exhibition, some of them they love the paintings, and I just donate them. I just give the the painting, but it's a printing, uh, but uh, doesn't mean that this printing is not is not doesn't have the quality. The quality is still there, but it's just a a copy. Uh, if you go to Dubai, there is one gallery. They call it one gallery. In one gallery, uh, they are doing Islamic painting. They don't, they don't sell any single original painting. Oh, okay. ah, yeah, and they are selling very expensive this uh, printing. And if you, if anybody uh, been to Australia, Australia is very good with their, uh, they are very good with, with their watercolor, you know, watercolor paintings. Uh, we see the painting is like uh, ninety nine point nine percent. Like original, but it's a printing, but they print oh. with a very good quality on on quality watercolor paper. So oh. it's, 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 a, it's okay printing. It's not a problem. So uh, I don't know how many paintings, but you know, uh, myself, hey. th 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 30 years, every day <laughs> I'm doing the paintings. But now I have 1,000 paintings. I cannot count how many paintings, but I, I tried 
to count, maybe I draw maybe more than 20,000 pieces of painting. <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. Uh, it's okay. A lot. So, so I think if, if you can compile it, your artwork, I think it's, it can become a encyclopedia, right? I <laughs> so don't know. <laughs> I never think that I want to become artist. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. No, uh, yeah. all of this from Allah Subhanahu that, Taala that 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 give me the topic and hidayah uh, to become like this. Now I'm I'm 60, but I'm still have the the strength that Allah give to do the painting. This morning also I do some painting in one of my gallery uh, with with my son, of course. Uh. All right. If you can see from from uh, from uh, there at your gallery at your Abdul Ghafur gallery, we can see a uh, many 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 different size, many different uh, style of uh, your artwork. So can you share with us what is your biggest artwork and very well known artwork that you ever made? In 2000, 2010, I started to draw the biggest painting Al Quran in the world, 2010. Oh, in the world. Yeah. Uh, my intention is uh, to draw the 600 pages of Al Quran, and one piece of the Al Quran, if you uh, if you look at Al Fatiha, you know, one piece of them, the size is eight by ten feet. Okay. Eight by ten feet. Uh, it's already finished only 30 pieces. I have no 30 pieces, size of 8 by 10. It's only uh, about Surah Al-Baqarah, only two juzu. After that, um, some technical things, you know, all of this need, uh, need uh, some uh, uh, money to, to, to buy the, <laughs> the canvas and everything. But the biggest uh, challenge for me is not, it's not the, the, the materials. The biggest challenge for me is the is the premise where I want to draw what I want to draw it because uh, I think I started to do this uh, Quran when I was in uh, they call it Yohan Yohan Plaza in in front of PWTC where where I rent the place monthly around ten thousand per month so on that time I can afford to pay uh, ten thousand a month. Because uh, I'm selling painting is uh, in original, you are selling uh, a bit expensive. So uh, this is the biggest painting, but uh, the most thing that uh, change uh, me and my my son. I have three sons actually. My sons, when one of my son Ahmad Dia is chosen, he's chosen by the National Islamic uh, Museum or in Kuala Lumpur to become one of the artists. On that time, he was 17 to become oh. uh, uh, participate as a Malaysian uh, youngest artist in the international artist. Uh, they combine around 36 calligraphy artists around the world. Around the world, wow. they have somebody uh, age 87 or so from Morocco, I think, and he's the youngest, 17. And it was uh, in 2012. This is the biggest uh, chance that they give to us. And we will have the next, uh, they, they call it the exhibition Nun Wal Kalam. Nun Wal Kalam is, is the biggest collection of Islamic calligraphy in the world. It's owned by Said Mukhtar Buhari, yes, San Buhari. Yes, sir, and uh, they, have, yeah. they will have the second exhibition next year. They collect already our paintings, yeah. Oh. This is the biggest chance that uh, they give to us. And from that, uh, they have a roadshow, you know, they have a roadshow, they have a gallery in London. They have a gallery in Egypt, I think. They, they, they publish a lot of books about these artistic artists in the world. So I think this is the biggest uh, thing that we have that Allah give us and make me feel confident to go outside. Uh, this is one of the things, you know, when, when, when we are accepted by the international, so that's why I don't care. I go to Japan, I go to anywhere. I just bring my paintings. Because uh, one of the purposes, just I told you, is to convey, to, to do da'wah, to spread the word of Allah, that's all. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, when, we talk, when we talk about uh, fundamentals, fundamentals of Islamic calligraphy, some said uh, that's a calligraphy, and some said uh, that's a khat. What's it actually different about khat and calligraphy itself? 
Actually, heart and calligraphy is the same things. Calligraphy is in in uh, in English, and heart is in 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 Arabic. Uh -huh. But uh, all of these are from Al Quran, isn't it? Yeah, it's Al Quran because uh, Al Quran uh, come to the earth uh, to uh, to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in Arabic language. But uh, for your information, uh, the calligraphy is already been in this world since. Uh, the prophet of Nabi Ibrahim alaihi salam. Uh, I was told by our teacher, we have uh, our teacher teaching about the history of the calligraphy. On that time, they have uh, around 76 type of one of the font, Kufi. Just imagine, on that time, during the Nabi Ibrahim alaihi salam, they have 76 of Kufi. Uh, so some so of it, them, start, it start from, from uh, uh, since... Uh, Nabi Nabi Ibrahim. Yes, it's, wow. it's, 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 it's not new. It's 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 old. If you see like uh, Kufi Moroba, Kufi Moroba, the square, you can see the history in in Russia in Bukhara. Some of the most is uh, is um, uh, is done by is uh, done by this type of Kufi. They call it, call it Kufi Moroba. Uh, as we know that we have uh, seven type of. Uh, calligraphy, we have Nasa, we have Sulus, we have Rika'ah, Diwani, Jalidah, Kufi, Farsi, and we have the new one, Sini. Uh, all of this come of these places. But the Kufi is already been few thousand years during uh, Nabi Ibrahim alaihi salam. So uh, this is uh, the thing that, uh, you know, what what is the beautiful thing to study about calligraphy? Because until now, I'm still studying. You know, mm -hmm. every time I do my my heart, my calligraphy, I will ask my son, especially because uh, all of my son, they went to Arabic school, they went to Islamic school, so they study about uh, calligraphy. And we have a uh, uh, few doctors in Malaysia, they are specialists in calligraphy. Uh, I want to to give thankful to uh, Dr. Azlin, uh, your, I mean, from UITM also, and Dr. Rauf. Uh, they are very good in calligraphy. Uh, we have our association, uh, we, call, we call it PSKK or National Calligraphy Association, have already been uh, 40 years in our country. And this is the only association that take care of the calligraphy in Malaysia, actually. Uh, because uh, we are, uh, all of this uh, calligraphy, they have their principle, they have their law, they have their way to do all of this. It's not just... Uh, doing uh, without knowledge. This is the the things that, beautiful thing with the, this calligraphy. Okay, so when we talk about fundamental Islamic calligraphy, what actually the, the, the biggest difference between local and overseas uh, arts in, in terms of Islamic calligraphy itself? Actually, um, uh, if we study about our history, uh, we accept the Islam in Malaysia, I think only 1, 150 years or 200 years. That means we are very new in Islamic calligraphy because Islamic calligraphy come from Al-Quran and we just received the Al-Quran. Uh, I just can say that we are only the followers, you know. In Malaysia, we are just only the followers. When we start um, to send our, our students to Egypt, to Jordan, to Saudi, to Yemen, we they they start to explore, you know, they start to to explore the the calligraphy that they have around the world. If you go to Morocco, they have uh, Moroccan uh, kufi. Everywhere they have, they have their own style. So uh -huh. when this student come back to Malaysia, so the 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 teacher the ustad they spread this 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 calligraphy to to our student here in Malaysia. Actually, all of this calligraphy oh. come from outside, uh, but we have the history like uh, our 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 previous uh, writing is Jawi. Uh, Jawi also is come from Arabic calligraphy. Yeah. So all this about history, all of this about Islam, and because Islam uh, reached here is is earlier is early so. All of this, uh, uh, like just now you asked me about difference. There is no difference actually, because we are just followers. 
we are just the, the student who study from the teachers outside. Oh, so so what do you mean by uh, we 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 have a our own own uh, uh technique or, or style, but we just borrow it from other other yeah. techniques or other style from from overseas, lah, right? So okay, and I think this this question is uh this uh become uh, uh maybe uh something yang we need we need to look at some point because if we talk about uh, calligraphy islamic calligraphy why is it why is is important to bring this art to our community to our environment to our uh, art uh, society why this is important it is it's very important because uh it's a responsibility for us as a Muslim uh, because what Allah said, uh, spread for me even though it's one ayat. So it's very important. So we spread everything that comes from Allah, uh, goes to our Prophet Wasallam, and to us, we must spread to everybody. So for, for us and artists, Allah give us the skill to draw, yeah? to draw. So this is our responsibility to bring people, you know, to this art, to near to Allah. So, this we call it Adil, you know, Adil. To become Adil, Adil in English, what you call it, uh, we must bring people to Allah. But if we have the skill that Allah gives and we, we, we bring people away from Allah, this is Zalim. So, this is a responsibility actually for us. To convey the Islam with our way. For, for example, people who can do nasheed, sings or read Al Quran, they convey the Islam through that way. Somebody who can do uh, actor as a, a as a, can do a film, they make Islamic film. Uh, some of them they can speak, they can do uh, Islamic speaking, so they do. But for us as an artist, for me, uh, calligraphy is is the easiest way to communicate with everybody. Uh, it's a responsibility because uh, when we do art painting, eh, especially when do this style, contemporary style. Contemporary is a is a new concept. It's a new concept to display the art. New concept, new way. But we are we are borrowing the, the way from the people, and we have a new way. For example, I do exhibition in Australia. You know? Most Australia are non-Muslim, but these non-Muslim they come and they ask so many things about the calligraphy. To contribute, so this is the way to 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 reach the people, and it's much more easier than other thing for me myself because uh, we are visualizer. Oh, okay, so is is you you said about contemporary and uh, and uh, and a classic art in in Islamic calligraphy. So we can see uh, from from your artwork, you have a, a different style of of your calligraphy technique. Um, some uh, like uh, square, square, uh, yeah, kufi. Uh, yeah, kufi. And in your opinion, uh, in your 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 view, what is actually what is a uh, a uh, uh, different different in, of classic and contemporary art in Islamic calligraphy? Classic and contemporary. What is different? Um, actually, is uh, there is not too much different uh, because we, uh, when we do calligraphy, we are we are attached to the rules of the calligraphy. For example, uh, one font, uh, the, the most hardest font to learn, they call it Sulus. Sulus is, is, is popular in Turkey. Uh, and Nasa, Nasa is uh, the font that they use to write the Al-Quran, you know. They have the rules, the principle and the law to do all of this uh, uh, letter, you know. It's not just you do, you do just, uh, like your way. For example, uh, I went to Istanbul with my son to study about the Sulus, you know. Uh, to study Sulus is, takes time. It takes few years, not few days, not few months. I met one student. Uh, we study in Irsika, Institute Research of uh, Islamic Culture like that, in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I met one student from Egypt. Mm, he's doing Al-Fatiha, you know, Al-Fatiha. I asked 
him. How long have you been doing all of this fatiha? Sorry. He said, I'm doing this uh, more than two years. And he can he can finish the, this Al Fatiha. You see how 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 tight is the 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 law and the principle of the heart. Uh, so that's why uh, when we do contemporary and traditional, actually these two things is not too much different. Contemporary for me, for me, this my this my personal uh, philosophy because I don't study art like you all. We study mm. architecture. Mm. As long as the things can be read. For example, we do abstract, uh, but all all must can be read, you know. This is my principle. Because if you can't read the things, for me, this is something wrong. Because, uh, for example, sorry, if you go to, to Turkey, you know, to Turkey, uh, they split this uh, conventional artist and uh, traditional artist. They cannot meet. They cannot meet oh. because... Uh, because the traditional artists, they are very firm with their law and their, their, yeah, their principle, the principle, everything. But the conventional artists, they do the abstract until you cannot read the words also. Uh, you, you understand? Yeah. Uh, this is their way. But for me, I have my personal uh, principle and philosophy. If I do any abstract, it must be readable. Mm. You can read. You can see the huruf, alif, ba, ta, everything is clear. Because we are, we are writing Al-Quran. Uh, if you write not Al-Quran, for example, you write a poem or what, or Malay writing, no problem. It cannot be read. But if you write the quran it must be readable. Because this is the law of the calligraphy. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that thing, it was issued uh, before this because uh, I... I... I ever ever see that that uh that one painting of calligraphy, but in 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 uh Al Quran words, okay, ayat Al Quran, but we can we can read that 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 ayat. So I think uh it tak sampai ke, 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 ke audience, right? Alright, so I think uh, we have a problem in network, okay? Because uh, because we 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 are live uh, in Haji Place, so uh, Haji Place. And okay. Okay, everything okay, Haji? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. All right. I'm, I'm so I'm sorry about my gallery now. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's okay, it's okay. All right, so uh, so we go to 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 uh next thing, which is when we talk about stigma in Islamic calligraphy. When we talk stigma in, of Islamic calligraphy, they, they will say uh, when we talk about Islamic calligraphy, it, it must be uh, Islamic Quran. itself, uh, Quran itself. So how do you think about it? Um, no, we can just split them into two because uh, when you write uh, a Quran, it's a Quran. But we can write uh, other than Al-Quran. For example, I'm doing batik. I have, I think, batik. Uh, when I do batik, I don't write the Al-Quran. I write, just write the, the huruf, like wow, alif. Uh, it, it's okay. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, against the rules. Uh, this is two things that you must separate then. If you read, uh, write Al-Quran, it's Al-Quran. If you write uh, not Al-Quran, it's not Al-Quran. For example, you like uh, write pantone, write poem, it's up to you. You How you want to write it. You understand? But the stigma is now. So if you read Al-Quran, you must write Al-Quran. Mm. So right. it's, it's uh, yeah. Okay, so it's clear. It's clear, right? Like, like, like no, you very said. clear, very clear. Uh. Okay. Okay, so I think we have uh, uh, some question. Okay, some question. I think we can, we can ask you uh, one question uh, we got from YouTube. Okay, YouTube. Yeah. It's like uh, from Aliyah, Alifa, Alifa Iliana. Uh, she asked, when when did Inche Gafur start to learn all type of kind? Uh, when? And is it during studies 
as an architecture student or earlier than that? Uh, okay, um, my my history of paintings. Uh, um, when I, I I told you my resident artist Imad, when we, he was with me, I started to study calligraphy from him. But this Imad, he, he is a very well known artist for his style uh, Diwani. They call it Diwani. Uh, he can do NASA, Sulu, everything. Can, but, but when he start is Diwani, his Diwani become a trend, yeah? become a trend because he's doing this in, 19, in 1990s. Uh, from that time, I start to study calligraphy from him. Uh, after uh, he went back to his country, so I start to draw paintings with no calligraphy because on that time, I don't have any confidence because we don't study formally. I just do so many abstract, you know abstract uh, with no calligraphy but uh, i study every day every day because calligraphy is something this knowledge that you must study uh, in front of a teacher you know you must uh, be corrected by uh, created by a teacher we, we call it in arabic talaki but when uh, all my son they already go to arabic school so they become my teacher they become a meditator because they study in Arabic school what is the kaidah and the principle of NASA and Sulus. Until now, I refer to my son, I refer to my friends in the National Calligraphy Association. We have a very big association. It's already 40 years in Malaysia. They have so many scholars there inside there. So we refer to them and we, we do some, uh, uh, we do some, uh, we call it uh, uh, teaching uh, calligraphy in the museum, in the schools everywhere uh, but i don't teach uh, i don't teach calligraphy i just teach a uh, uh, principle of uh, abstract only so uh, every day we are studying actually every day we are studying until now we are still studying and they have so many uh, competition of uh, calligraphy uh, locally and internationally uh, it's, it's very good uh, uh, it's very good of uh, building a calligraphy in malaysia actually uh, right now, for example, uh, next end of this month, we have a very big show in uh, Expo Halal Malaysia. We have uh, exhibition, we have competition. So it's very great in Malaysia. We, get, we have so many particip participants and we have so many uh, students involved in this, uh, in this uh, calligraphy. And now, you know, nowadays we have so many Islamic schools. Uh, um, these are students who have so many so many, what do you call it, skills, so gifted, they, they are very, very good. And one of our participants from the National Calligraphy Association, uh, they become one of the best uh, calligraphy in the world, you know. Uh, like in 19, 2016 or 2017, our, our great calligrapher, uh, we call it Ustaz Baki, he won number one in Istanbul oh. uh, for, for, the best, uh, uh, for the best writer of this uh, NASA, you know, uh, Sulus. Uh, oh. We have competition every every year. We have competition, and right. we alhamdulillah we we Malaysian we become the pioneer of the of the yeah. calligraphy. Uh, but until now we are still studying because it's not easy. It's not easy. Calligraphy is not easy. Okay, okay. Uh, Cak Bergafu. So uh, before we, we 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 proceed to to uh, another segment or another session for for our webinar, yeah. uh, I would like to invite. Okay, I would like to invite uh, our special guest because uh, before you said uh, you have a son that uh, also joined you in 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 uh, in this uh, calligraphy arts in Islamic calligraphy and also uh, he joined you he joined to 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 international and local uh, exhibition competition and I think it's good to to bring 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 him to to our webinar to. Uh, and we can we can uh, get his personal view about you about 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 what what he can see uh, from his view in our local uh, and international uh, calligraphy art. So uh, so I think uh, we can invite. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. 
So as I know uh, Ahmad Dia, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, right now we have a two two uh, familiar person, two familiar person in in calligraphy art, which is uh, Encik Abdul Gafu and his son Encik uh, Ahmad Dia. So uh, for uh, Mr Ahmad Dia, can you introduce yeah. yourself to the audience? Yeah. My name is Ahmad Dia bin Abu Ghafur. I am from Selangor. I uh, just like my father. <laughs> so, so, so you live in, uh, with your your father? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, can you briefly inform inform us about yourself? Uh, and and how many years, uh, you are in this Islamic calligraphy? Yeah. It's okay. I'm uh, actually I uh, I one of the calligraphy artists in this. That's uh, Abdul Ghafur. Long. Yeah, I was about 20 years since I was seven. <laughs> since you were seven? Yeah. Oh, right. So, right now, how old are you? Now I'm 20, 27. 27. So, wow. It's quite a long <laughs> time, right? <laughs> okay. So, uh, what actually your, your, your major or major or type of of calligraphy is the same with with your dad or you have a different style or different type of calligraphy by your 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 own artwork yeah i learned so many type of calligraphy like iwani kofi and yeah i was influenced by the divan diwani kali uh, diwani khat <laughs> So 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 your your favorite your favorite uh, or, or your 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 major is uh diwani art right yeah. diwani calligraphy yeah okay. okay since you are son of 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 a popular calligraphy artist uh, Abdul Ghafur so can you describe your 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 dad how your dad in 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 uh, develop you as a calligraphy artist. Oh. Yeah, he's uh, teaching me using the brush to to sketch the calligraphy <laughs> using the uh. brush and pen. Yeah. So so he he teach you how to use a brush. Uh, yeah. How 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 to use color. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How 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 do you feel work with your 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 dad? Okay. So because sometimes people working with with uh, another person that that he didn't know. Okay. So uh, about you, you are working with your dad, <laughs> your 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 dad and Abdul Gafur yeah, himself. Yeah. So. Uh, how 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 do you work with, with him? Yeah, actually, we start uh, to establish a company named so Abdul Ghafur and Dad. Huh? It's hard to working with him. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's hard and easy time. <laughs> <laughs> very so, busy. So 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 Abdul Ghafur uh, very helpful to 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 guide you and uh, to to get you. Uh, a, a knowledge and and skill to develop your your calligraphy skill, right? Yeah. Actually, I don't have anything like. I just help my father <laughs> to do his uh. artwork. Uh. Okay. Right. What is your biggest accomplishment or or your biggest achievement in in uh, calligraphy? Yeah, my Your biggest, biggest achievement. Achievement is uh, the non-wall column exhibition in 
Islam National Art Museum of Kuala Lumpur. Uh, that that was uh, Abdul Ghafur. Your dad your dad said before. Eh? Uh, you 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 uh, na naming as a you youngest right youngest. Yeah, the youngest. <laughs> youngest calli calligrapher. Eh? Yeah, at that time. Yeah. Uh, that's that's ten years ago. Your first time. Your first time. Uh, your first time. Uh, joining that that exhibition or 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 what? No, it was my first as it, uh, international exhibition. So when you joined the, the, the first time and then you get you you, you got that 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 uh, award for your youngest uh, calligrapher. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite interesting, uh, right? Okay. So as a as a I think you still a uh, younger because you you just only 27 right okay what is your advice what your advice or nasihat to 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 the audience uh, uh, who is still young and want to join uh, in Islamic calligraphy what your advice yeah, my advice is uh, to learn calligraphy we basically we have to be Strong and passion to know the kaidah. <laughs> oh. Okay. So uh, I think we can back to to Ji uh, Abdul Ghafur to 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 continue our session. So uh, so for for uh, for this session, I will I will ask about Ji uh, uh, Abdul Ghafur. For his mission and vision in uh, his artwork. So, uh, Abdul Ghafur. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, may I know uh, what is your your mission and vision in your artwork in uh, mostly in 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 Islamic calligraphy? What is uh, your mission and uh, your mission your mission and vision? Uh, inshallah. Uh, sometimes I feel that uh, it's just a responsibility as the Khalifa of of the Ummah to spread the words of uh, Allah. You know, for me, if I can, I want to put all my paintings all around the world in an Islamic country or non-Islamic country. That's why uh, I have so many things to do. For example, I want to finish my biggest Al-Quran in the world because the first intention to do that Quran, we just uh, started in Malaysia and will be participated by international calligrapher because I want to bring this Al-Quran to China, to ask the Chinese calligrapher. I want to bring this to Russia, to ask the Russian calligrapher to continue to everywhere in this world. Uh, including in Japan, because in Japan there is one big uh, Islamic calligrapher. They call it Fuad Kuchi Honda. Oh. I want, uh, yeah, very big. He is one of the participants of the you know, international uh, Nunwal Kalam. Fuad Kuchi Honda is a Japanese. He's already, I think now I'm 60, he's 70 plus. He, he's, he's one of the best calligrapher in the world, you know. He's a Japanese. So I want to bring all of these uh, international artists to continue this, uh, the biggest painting Al-Quran. Uh, you know why uh, this mission is, is very big? I don't know, I can, I can, uh, I can reach or not because I'm already 60. Uh, but right now, I use any opportunity, any chance to spread this word. Alhamdulillah, uh, du during this uh, MCO, we are a bit trapped in our country. We cannot go anywhere. But I got few invitations, inshallah, this year. Uh, I, I got the invitation to go to Dubai, to go to Istanbul, to go to Singapore. Uh, Singapore is also is a good place for, for art. Inshallah, uh, my mission is uh, uh, I want everybody to to reach uh, Allah 
through this calligraphy. You just okay. imagine. Okay. So, uh, I, I, the audience have a give a question. Okay, but I think if you don't mind to 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 give your uh, uh to to answer this question. So this question from uh, from a uh, person from uh, YouTube. If you don't mind sharing throughout your exhibition, what was the biggest achievement when it come to selling your artwork? And if you don't mind, can you sharing that figures? So it mean uh, uh, soalannya berkaitan dengan apakah jualan yang 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 paling paling besar lah nilai dia. If you don't mind. Uh, it's not about the figure, but uh, it's the appreciation of the people. No? When we sold one of the one piece of painting for fifty thousand, for me this one is not little. It's not small. It's big for a calligraphy artist. You know, for conventional artist. Fifty thousand. Yeah, fifty thousand per one piece. Oh, okay. But. Uh, this is a painting you know, but when we go to for example i do so many interior for the mosque you know for the mosque especially i did uh, most for the penjara malaysia i did most for the for the one of the town in melaka i forgot the name now so uh, this project is uh, rich until half million Half million, but we yeah, half million, but the calligraphy is not on canvas. It's on on marbles, on timber, on metals. Uh, you know the concept of contemporary, as I told you now. Uh, we we want to 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 put this calligraphy on any media. It's not just uh, canvas. It's not just visual art. Uh, Right now we are doing a competition for the sculpture, yeah? calligraphy sculpture in UTM will oh. be uh, yeah in UTM uh, Skudai uh, will be held uh, next month. So I want all of this uh, calligraphy in so many dimensional, the uh, so many metal, so many media, so many dimension dimension. Uh, so it will be very costly if you go to Dubai. You know, they have so many. Sculpture that cost million of dollars, you know, a million of dollars. Uh, it's not about the the value of the, the the paintings or the calligraphy, but the value of how people can pay for that money for the calligraphy. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I I am uh, famous in Malaysia. Like <laughs> they told me, if you want to buy expensive painting, you go to you go to Gafur, like that, because uh, sometimes I don't sell my paintings very cheap. That's uh, why I do, I do have a, a copy. We call it a printed. If you want cheap one, we print for you. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. So, 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 you have a different, different uh type of uh, artwork, printing and and original uh painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a different price. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, you said before, uh, you go to to uh doing some exhibition around the world. So. Can you share with us the most meaningful experience when you're doing exhibition, uh, uh, yeah, local yeah. and international? Uh, I did exhibition in, if I'm not mistaken, in 2012 in New South Wales, Australia. Uh, I went there because uh, my daughter living there, so I went there. We have uh, uh, like uh, Islamic carnival after the Idil Fitri. So we have three days exhibition there. Uh, I was invited there. I was invited. Uh, you know, uh, we should pay the the rent for the for the stall. It's expensive, two thousand dollar for one booth. You know, it's not cheap. Two thousand Malaysian ringgit is six thousand. But when they know that we come from Malaysia, we have so many paintings. So they give me, I think, around five kiosks for free. Oh, <laughs> for free, <Coffee. laughs> free. Uh, it's three days only. It's three days only. Uh, one of the big experience that I have, there is uh, one Jewish lady, 
because he came to us he said i'm jewish at australia in, in australia in south wales sydney sydney in oh. sydney i'm a jewish uh, he go around look over my painting he asked so many questions about the paintings about the words everything i said uh, i'm not good in islamic scholar uh, can you come back tomorrow i give you one book so she came back uh, the second day oh, because yeah. uh, you know I, I i'm not i don't have a background of islamic uh, knowledge you know uh, mm. when we speak about islam we must be very 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 perfect when we right we cannot just speak like we speak now yeah. so i give her a quran one uh, uh, translation of a quran so he said okay i read so the third day he came she came uh, the third day she came with the hijab you know i was very surprised oh I all said, right yeah with the hijab i said why you why you wear the hijab i said i want to become muslim today mashallah oh so i just called my neighbor he's from africa uh, a lady africa so he conveyed the shahada and become muslim on that day mashallah a jewish and, lady and, and, and you stay contact with with her uh it's already 10 years ago uh, now I, i didn't contact because uh, in in australia okay okay there's some problem network problem All right uh for audience just stay tuned because uh we're still live but we have some uh problem in our network so i think uh convert to islam right. yeah yeah okay so it's uh for audience uh sorry for 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 the distribution because uh we have problem uh, uh network problem at uh abdul gafur place so i think uh we can we can show some uh, some slide or some image for his art from his artwork uh to show that uh, uh uh, types of uh, Islamic calligraphy that that uh, uh, Encik Abdul Ghafur uh, made it. Okay, so it looks like very, very nice and very beautiful uh, uh, wording of Al Quran and very wonderful colors at there and many sizes. So anyone and everyone audience who like who like to to see more uh, this this Islamic calligraphy so I think we can uh, you you guys can can go to to Abdul Ghafur uh, art gallery to see by yourself uh, how beautiful how wonderful of his artwork his artwork and 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 I, I think uh, we can uh, support him to to achieve his mission and vision to to give a dakwah uh, to give a dakwah in in his way which is using uh, uh, calligraphy eh? using calligraphy and using his painting right we still waiting for for J. Abdul Ghafur view right now because uh we uh we about to come last part in our webinar session which is a question and answer session but we need to 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 hear, to hear, uh to hearing uh, from Jabdul Ghafur about that that Jewish woman uh, it's very interesting yeah yeah okay online okay, okay about about the, about this lady because uh, in australia uh, everywhere you know i like australia too much i don't know why uh, <laughs> not just uh, because my daughter is there i have five uh, grandchildren there actually oh uh, right because uh, the the activity in the mosque there they do the hour every day they do the hour every, every day every day every day for example, uh, the first time I reached one of the mosques there, 
for information, in New South Wales in 2012, there is 160 mosques in New South Wales. It's a lot, you know. It's an un-Muslim country and they have 160 mosques in New South Wales. New South Wales is Australia, you know. Yeah. It's, it's Sydney, it's Sydney, sorry, it's Sydney. It is Sydney, yeah. It's Sydney. You know, every mosque, they have dakwah. For example, uh, after Maghrib, they have, uh, they have, uh, what they call it? They have, they have uh, a speech, you know, from, from the Ustaz. I was very surprised. Uh, the people come to the mosque uh, with short pants and without hijab, and they <laughs> learn, the, uh, they, they hear the speech. And this uh, Ustaz are speaking about Islam and before Isha, they have a question. And after that, they said, okay, today how many people want to convert to Islam? So four or five people raised their hand, okay, I want to do Shahada today. Uh, oh. This is the da'wah in Australia until today. Until today. Oh. They are very, very open, very open. So when we do this exhibition, so, so many, you know, when you do exhibition, uh, more than half of the people are Europeans, are Chinese, are non-Muslim, come to exhibition. We just imagine, not like in our country, in Malaysia, when we do exhibition, only the Malay, the Muslim come to our gallery. Yeah. Very, very seldom to see a non-Muslim to come to our gallery. Is, is it correct? Yes, it's correct. Yeah. <laughs> but then in, in Australia, I went to Melbourne, I went to Perth, I went to Sydney, everywhere. Most of them are non-Muslim. So beside, beside to, to know about the, the calligraphy, we must know about the knowledge of the Islam. Because mm -hmm. people are asking so many things. So yes. Alhamdulillah, uh, these this ladies, uh, this, just I tell you, this uh, African woman, to so help her and they are in big society. They have very big Islamic society in, in Australia. You know, for invention, uh, like in Sydney, they have their own mufti. Oh, huh. yeah, mufti. In Melbourne, they have their own mufti. So it's big, it's not small. Mm. And and now you, you see so many uh, uh, police women, they are wearing hijab. Most of them are Muslim. And there is two parliament members are Muslim in Australia. Oh, and I one see. of them, they bought my paintings. That's why I know. Yeah. <laughs> So wow. uh, locally, locally, when I have a gallery in Centre Market, yeah, uh, on that time I was with Imad, uh, two Chinese lady. Uh, she asked, they asked so many questions about Islam when they see this calligraphy. On the spot, they said, I want to become a Muslim, two Chinese lady. Just imagine, I said, MashaAllah. So after we do the shahada to them, I said to them, you must study, uh, you must study uh, Islam. So say, I, want, I, I want to study. So we took them to one of the uh, Islamic association, they call it Perkim in Kuala Lumpur. So until now they study Islam, I don't know, it was 10 years ago, they become Muslim really. So right. so many things happened about this calligraphy, you know. So many things happened to us. So so Alhamdulillah, from, from your sharing, from your exhibition outside Malaysia, uh, international, so we can uh, know that, that not just you do the exhibition for your artwork, but you, 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 you give a message. You give a message to 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 a community of non-Muslim that that uh, Islam is a beautiful. You, yeah. uh, even is is uh, use your 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 calligraphy. Okay, so I think we 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 come to to the end of our our session in webinar, which is a. Uh, uh, question and answer session. So I, I get so many questions for you. And uh, one uh, from Iliani Romi. Uh, so she asked, any advice or tips for people who want to learn and explore more about Islamic calligraphy? Do you provide classes or workshop? Uh, okay, uh, if you want to do uh, Islamic calligraphy, Number one, we must have a knowledge, you know. Uh, we must knowledge, we must learn the principle, the kaeda of every font. So we have classes that is organized by our society, National Calligraphy Association. Uh, 
based uh, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, InsyaAllah this year we are going to start our classes in the Islamic Museum of uh, Kuala Lumpur near uh, in front of Masjid Negara. Oh, so, when? Uh, uh, because of this uh, MCO, so we uh. stopped these classes for two years, just imagine. We, we are <laughs> going to start this year, inshallah, oh, inshallah. If, they, okay. if they give permission. But beside that, uh, you can just go to the website of uh, PSKK Persatuan Seni Hat Kebangsaan. We have classes everywhere because we have a, a, a PSKK all around uh, the state. We have in Sabah, Sarawak, Johor, we have everywhere. So we are ready to learn to teach everybody in in our gallery also here in uh, in Malakat Mall. Uh, inshallah, we will start our class next month. Inshallah. Next so month. we have also uh, online. If you go to our website, we have online study also. You can you can study calligraphy. So my oh. advice, my advice, if you want to do uh, calligraphy painting, you must study about the calligraphy. Uh, one thing I want to tell everybody today. Sorry to, to say about this because uh, we calligrapher, we we protect all of all of these uh, Al Quran words, you know. We take care all of this uh, kaeda and procedure and principle everything. And if you go to the website, if you go to the Google's anything in Lazada or Shopee and everything, they are selling the calligraphy everywhere, you know. And mm. nobody are checking. Are checking the words is correct or not correct is is some sometimes you just take from other calligrapher without with, without your permission if mm. you take uh, the art the calligrapher for example allah alif lam lam ha you take from from one calligrapher without permission for me this is this is a a thief <laughs> it is a thief you must have permission from them because yeah. it's happened to us also they oh. took our paintings and they scan and they they edit in their way. Uh, for us, it's not a big matter. But when you edit them in a wrong way, for example, when you do uh, Kufri Moroba, uh, so many mistakes, you know, so many mistakes that they done. Uh, it's not just they, they steal our artwork. <laughs> they, they do so many mistakes. And when you write a Quran wrongly, it's a forbidden, you know, it's haram. Yeah. Uh, so I must I must tell everybody, you must learn, you must study, and you must get permission from all of this. Uh, mm. I want to teach all of you here, the audience today. If you see so many uh, calligraphy uh, in the website, you just ask them, who is the calligrapher? Oh. If they name the calligrapher, you buy. If you they, they don't name the calligrapher, you don't buy this painting. Do not buy because okay. they are taking from others' artwork. Definitely. Mm -hmm. If they cannot name the calligrapher, they steal from somebody. Or it's else, a warning, it's or a warning else, from, from, uh, from us actually. Yeah. Or else uh, we can buy directly uh, from that that calligrapher itself, right? Yes, you must know who is the calligrapher. Yeah. You ask them. You you open Shopee today now. You ask them who is the calligrapher. If you don't know who is the calligrapher, you don't buy because he took his steel from the artwork of a calligrapher. Maybe it's right. not local calligrapher. It's a international. But you must get permission. You must give royalties. Everything. This is a warning from us, you know, because yeah. you you cannot take this this thing from people. You know, you are stealing. And you are spreading Allah words. Why you steal all of this from the peoples, from our artwork? Okay. So sorry to tell this because uh, uh, I am very proud today. I can yeah. speak this matter uh, live, yeah. Because, because normally really I, 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 I comment, I comment so many things in in my Facebook. From where you get this calligraphy uh, art? From where? From where? They cannot, they cannot answer the name of the calligrapher. That's mean you are stealing. All right, so we go to next question uh, okay. from, from Facebook. Uh, after many years being a calligraphy artist, uh, after get big achievement and recognition, did you have any plan to change your direction, direction within the art making from 2D, which is in canvas, to 3D? Uh, oh, yeah. uh, maybe in sculpture? 
Okay, thank you. I think uh, I think this, this this person he know what I'm going to do <laughs> because next month uh, we have big. Uh, I think this is the first uh, tournament. Uh, what, what they call it? Uh, we held in UC Technology Malaysia. They have uh, pameran seni hat kebangsaan where we make a, a pertandingan for the archa and we oh. open for everybody. And we have good price for this. Number one, we will give two thousand. The second one, one thousand five. Uh, the third one, one thousand. If not mistaken, and we are collaborating with. Uh, I think you know this person, uh, Abdul Rahman from from Faculty of Metal, I think. Oh. We collaborate uh, from UITM. Oh, so we have this. Uh, we have this pertandingan there. The first one in Malaysia, you know. So uh, actually, I started already doing this uh, this uh, sculpture during when, when I was with Imad. I think I do several things, that, but the thing that I remember, I did one small sculpture for uh, Siti Nohaliza husband Datuk K in his house. Uh, Datuk K is he is a big collector art painting, you know. He's big collector. He collects some of our paintings. I do. I did one sculpture. I think I did one big sculpture in front of the uh, Istana Kayangan, Sha'alam, I think around 30 feet. But now, inshallah, uh, uh, my next step, I'm doing some sculpture because we architect, we do something different, something uh, that, uh, three dimensional. Inshallah, we are going to that movement. Okay. So we, 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 we can't wait uh, to watch uh -huh. your, your, your sculpture. Okay. So another question uh, from uh, Sarah, Sarah Ramli. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Can we do? Can we do calligraphy digitally, and will it lose its aesthetic? So it means, uh, she asked, can we uh, do a calligraphy in in digital way, in maybe in your uh, computer or software? And if we, we we do that, if we do that, it would uh, lose its aesthetic or not? Oh no! As I told you just now, in 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 one gallery, one gallery from Dubai. You know, one gallery is a big gallery. They have uh, branches in Melbourne, in Singapore, in Dubai, of course. In Dubai, they have few galleries. All of them are digital art, and we have so many digital calligraphy artists in Malaysia. Uh, one of them is my friend, Ismail Mazen. He already doing this also thirty years like me. All of these are digital, but digital have a principle, also, you know, have a law, have a law. So that all these things you must study, you must learn. Uh, for me, for uh, personally, I can teach everybody for free. <laughs> no need to pay. You just get my WhatsApp number, and you can ask me everything that you want to draw. I can, I can, I can uh, create, create the the works. Uh, but digital is very sensitive, you know, because. Uh, I see uh, some of the people they do digital, uh, they are doing wrongly, you know, because they are using computer. Using computer is is not easy, but it's easier than a visual art that we draw. So everything must have a knowledge. Everything you must learn. Inshallah. All right. Okay. So uh, the next question, uh, we we have more question to come. Okay. So another question. Uh, that this person from from uh, Aris, so he asked, uh, how many style of kufi? How many style wow. of kufi? Uh, I told you just now uh, during the Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, they have seventy six. Now they have seventeen types of kufi. You know, until now I'm studying so they have kufi Moroba, they have kufi Fatimi, they have uh, kufi Maghribi. So many have seventeen types. So all of this you must study, uh, but of course, if you want to study all of this uh, 70, 17 uh, kufi, you cannot study here in Malaysia. You must go to Egypt or you must go to Yemen, you must go to Morocco, you must go to all of these countries to study all of this kufi. That, that, that place, the origin of, of calligraphy? Yes. For example, you want to study uh, kufi Maghribi, you must go to Morocco. Uh, if you want to study kufi Fatimi, I think you must go to Egypt. Uh, I mean, you, you cannot you cannot search 
one teacher can teach everything now. Right, this right. is the, the, the hardness of the callig Islamic calligraphy. Oh, okay. Oh. So, I think uh, this is last question from okay. uh, from Facebook, okay? Right, I, I think this, this question is quite uh, interesting. If you don't mind, can you share what is the saddest moment? I, uh, previously, we asked you about your uh, uh, happy moment and wonderful moment, but this question uh, asked about what is your saddest, saddest moment that have you faced when being a calligraphy artist? Maybe, maybe in the aspect of economic, economy, economical or emotional. Say this uh, moment. Mashallah, uh, good question for me. Um, <laughs> it's not about the economic because uh, I used to do so many things. I'm not just a calligrapher. I'm a businessman. I do, I I, I do have shop selling uh, garment. I I do advertising company. So many things I do, but. Uh, uh, I, I don't remember what year, but I think two years after I go, I went out from the gallery that I told you I ran for 10,000 a month. On that time, I can't I can afford to pay 10,000. <laughs> 10,000 a month. I was there two years. After that, I bring all my paintings. Uh, I keep in my store. For two years, I didn't uh, do any exhibition. Uh, this is the thing that made me uh, feel down. So on that time, I went to Australia. I went to Australia. I bring some of my paintings. You know, the thing that I feel very sad about the people in Malaysia. I think, I don't know who, who want to be blamed, you know. Because Malaysian, we have so many artists. Sorry to tell you. UITM. They have a yearly born 10,000 artists from UITM. They have architecture, they have landscape, they have art and design, they have fine art, they have metal, they have fashion. All of these are artists. But where this uh, student go? Where, where this student go, you know, 10,000? That's been, mm -hmm. uh, we have so many artists, but the people here, they don't know how to appreciate the artists. Uh -huh. Sorry to tell you, we Malaysian have a wrong definition of artists. For us artists, for a Malaysian artist is a singer or a, an actor. That is yeah. artist. When when visual artists like like us, nobody know because we are just we call it artist jalanan. We do painting say and there. Sometimes I do in in pasar malam and pasar pagi. Uh, we yeah. are not Siti Nuhaliza. We are not uh, Ma, uh, Mawi because we are not Mawi. No, nobody know Ustaz Baki. Ustaz Baki is number one Sulu writer in the world. Just imagine, hmm. it got number one in, 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 in Dubai and in, in Turkey. Just imagine, the wrong definition of a Malaysian to know who is artist. For that artist, is a singer or an actor. No. Uh, that made me feel sad. You know, when I go, that's why I told you, I went, I went to Australia. These people, they appreciate art. They told us, oh. Oh, you are not human. You are an angel. <laughs> the artist, we are an angel, you know. And they said, I don't want to buy your painting. I want to buy your fingers. <laughs> you just imagine right. how they appreciate us. But in Malaysia, we have a lot of artists. All of you are, are, are master in fine art. All of you are artists. But I don't know where to put. You know, when I go to, I, I went to uh, World Art Dubai, you know, World Art Dubai. Uh, uh, the first time I, 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 I'm there, I was very surprised. He said to me, oh, you are the first Malaysian artist to have an exhibition here in World Art Dubai. You know World Art Dubai? All of the artists in all over the world, they come to exhibit their, their paintings there in World Art Dubai. And to come into World Art Dubai, you must pay 300 ringgit. It's not free to enter a, a gallery, you know, oh. in Dubai. You must pay. And he said, I'm the first artist. I said, why I'm the first artist? I'm not artist. Why the Malaysian, they, soon, they don't send the artists to have exhibition internationally, for example, in, in, in Dubai or anywhere. Dubai have, have, Dubai have thousands of exhibitions. So uh, it, it, it's my advice to all of the artists in Malaysia because sometimes... 
people don't appreciate us, you go outside. Because I meet so many uh, Malaysian artists in Melbourne, most of them are Chinese. I forgot their names. Because okay. the people outside are appreciating us. But here the people, uh, this is the thing that made, made me sad. Uh, it's not just because uh, people don't buy our paintings. Uh, because most of the full-time artists, they cannot survive in Malaysia. They cannot survive in Malaysia. All right. Okay, so, all right, uh, Encik Abdul Ghaffur. So, before before we end our our se our webinar session, so, the last, the last, last word from you. <laughs> any advice, any advice to, to the young artist who wants to do this Islamic calligraphy? Your advice for young artists. Allah Akbar. Um, for me, advice to myself and to everybody that hearing this uh, evening, this afternoon, uh, just do all of this for the sake of Allah. You bring people to Allah and Allah will bless you, inshallah. Okay, last word only. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, all right. Uh, so, before we... Uh, now, we are in closing part of our webinar. Thank you for Encik Abdul Ghafur for give your time and sharing about uniqueness and fundamental in Islamic calligraphy work. So thank you again and inshallah if you have an, if you have uh, another discussion or webinar regarding this topic we will inviting you again. Inshallah I, I want to say thank you for you all of you and uh, very thousand apologize for my words sometimes is from my heart actually. Sometimes we cannot keep all of this. We must tell the people what, what should we tell them. Because I'm already old, I'm 60. I must tell everybody what's happening to us. Inshallah, Allah will bless us. Inshallah. Okay. Uh, before that, Aji, uh, uh, Abdul Ghafur, so can you share your, your Facebook your, your, your Facebook address or Facebook link or, or Shopee? Do you have any, any Shopee or Facebook? Okay, actually, uh, my son did for this all of this Facebook. My Facebook is Abdul Ghafur Haji Tahir, one, one of them, and another one is Abdul Ghafur Art Gallery. There is two Facebook. But oh, two Facebook. Uh, for information, I'm not very active in this Facebook. Uh, I'm busy here and there, <laughs> so sometimes so, so, my son. So your, uh, your son handle handle your your account. Yeah, 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 account. And about okay. Shopee, I just want to tell you, uh, I did some in Shopee because. You know, Shopee are a, a competition of price and people are searching for a cheap painting in Shopee. So they don't buy my painting because my painting is a, a bit expensive for them, for them. Okay. I don't, I, I have in Shopee, you can just also have Abdul Ghaffur Art Gallery. Okay. So uh, everyone in this webinar can, uh, maybe can follow uh, Haji Abdul Ghaffur uh, Facebook and Instagram and uh, if you want wanna buy a, a, a calligraphy art, maybe you you guys can can uh, go to Shopee and you guys can uh, directly go to uh, uh, Abdul Ghaffur Art Gallery. Okay, can right, can so I you. can I share my my WhatsApp number here? Uh, okay, okay. My WhatsApp number so people can communicate with me direct if they want to learn or teach or anything or want to buy. My number zero one eight. Two one nine seven zero one eight two two one nine seven four six five. All right. Zero one eight two one nine seven four six five. Okay. So we, 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 thank we you will share much. that that number to to uh, to who ask that number. Okay, and and we can share to everyone. All right. So thank you, Shah Abdul Ghafur. Okay. Assalamualaikum. All right. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. So uh. Islamic calligraphy is not just the art of handwriting, okay? Uh, it uh, is a tool. It's a tool for communication and preserving the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran. It's a reflection of inner self to the artwork. If our audience want to learn more about Islamic calligraphy, feel free to follow Encik Abdul Ghaffur bin Aji Tahir in Facebook, Instagram. Now you can buy here his artwork via Shopee. Yes. Via Shopee. Thanks for Shopee. 
uh, just go to the apps and search Abdul Ghaffur Art Gallery. And this is not free ads for Shopee. Okay. So also feel free to walk in and drop by at by at Malakat Mall, Cyberjaya, to experience and take a look further at Encik Abdul Ghaffur Artwork. We have now come to an end of our third Akadisa 5 with the title From Malaysia to the World, Exploring the Uniqueness and Fundamental of Islamic Calligraphy in Contemporary Art. I would like to take this opportunity to extend our gratitude and thank to our guest speaker, which Abdul Ghaffur bin Haji Tahir, and all respected lecturers, professors, and dearest friend from the Indonesian Art Institute, ISI Yogyakarta, Indonesia, Silpakon University Thailand, and University of Nojimara, Malaysia. Most importantly, thank you for team production for full effort and pulling each other up throughout the Arkadesa 2021. Don't forget to follow Arkadesa 2021 on Instagram at Arkadesa5, A-R-C-A-D-E-S-A-5, and our Facebook page, Arkadesa Space 5, for more upcoming events because we still have more interesting webinar for you. If you have any thought and brilliant ideas, do share with us and let your voice be heard. Uh, I'm Mr. Benjamin. Until then, stay safe and take care. Assalamualaikum.